Hi, Alton Gansky here, altongansky.com, and I want to thank you for joining us for another Typewriter Tuesday episode. And today we're going to look at a typewriter that is as old as me. It came to me from uh, my daughter, who uh, got it free from a friend and passed it on to me. And it is a rather mysterious typewriter, and I'll explain a little bit more about all of that in just a little bit. So today we're going to look at a 1953 Remington Portable Typewriter, a typewriter without a name. Stay with me. It's Typewriter Tuesday. Let's journey into the past to see what writers of old used to use to ply their trade. What kind of mechanical beauty does Al have for us this week? Well, this is the machine I was talking about. Uh, we came into the world about the same time, 1953. And this is a Remington. And I'm going to call it a no-name. Let me explain that. Uh, some of you that collect typewriters will look at this and say, well, that's just a quiet writer. Well, is it? Or maybe it's a letter writer, which is part of the same family that uh, Remington Rand was producing uh, in the mid-century. Uh, and it kind of looks very much like a letter uh, writer. And writer spelled R-I-T-E-R -E in the model names. Uh, R-I-T-E-R. -E or it could be a travel uh, writer, which was made overseas by the Remington Company. Well, you know, at first glance, that's kind of what I thought I was looking at when my uh, daughter uh, who works in an escrow company, and a friend of hers uh, came in, a co-worker, and asked if uh, anybody might like a typewriter, so she thought of me, and uh, of course I jumped at the chance to uh, get one of these, because uh, they look better, in fact they look better in person than they do in uh, photos. Uh, it's a great little typewriter, which we'll talk a little bit more about, but as I began to do my research on it, I kind of ran against a, a wall, and the reason is the typewriter does not have a model name. Yes, it looks like a quiet rider, except it's lacking a few keys. Quiet rider had more keys than this. Uh, it had, had a one key uh, and uh, some other things go along with it. It's more along of a deluxe line, uh, but it's the same basic body configuration, this uh, mid-century kind of look, uh, almost industrial, yet it still has some soft curves to it. Very similar to a typewriter that came out before this called the personal typewriter, and it was billed as the first personal office typewriter. Uh, that is, you could use it as an office typewriter, but it was really meant for an individual to take home. And so it's a portable. Now, just one look at it and you say, well, that's a pretty big portable. And that's true. There are very light portables that were out there. Remington made a whole bunch of them uh, and some great looking machines. Uh, but then there were some that were meant to be used more than uh, just when traveling or just back and forth to school because uh, they often uh, targeted students, both the high school and college students. Well, there's this thing, and this is one of the most basic typewriters you can find. The only name I can find for it is uh, the non-tabulator typewriter, uh, and that's because you cannot tab with it. Remember I said it was very basic. Here you see the uh, logo on the back, Remington Rand. Uh, two years after this, it will become Sperry Rand, and there will be some basic design changes to this, but not a great deal. Um, it's got lovely green uh, on the keys. It's kind of famous for its green keys. Um, and these keys are very dark green, a little difficult maybe perhaps to see in the video, but it is a very dark green as uh, is this. Uh, it has the same stylings of a quiet writer, uh, a letter writer, a uh, travel writer, some of the others. Uh, but a little bit later after this, and the best I can tell, these were only made for a couple of years, uh, I think 52 and 53 if memory serves, but they began to make little changes when uh, they became uh, Sperry ran, uh, making some of these, and there's chrome uh, on the Quiet Rider along here. Uh, it's just a little pop, a little bit of bright work across there, uh, and it looks very, very good, uh, very solid machines. They, these are rugged. This is the kind of machine that you get if you're going to crank out a book. It's going to be used over and over again. More than just a term paper, uh, more than uh, you know, writing the letter to Aunt Susie. Uh, you're going to be cranking out the pages. This is one of the typewriters uh, that uh, people would get. Uh, to help distinguish between uh, Quiet Writer and this one, uh, there's a couple of things to look for. Now, I already mentioned the chrome accent that goes along there. Uh, but all the other typewriters have labels here. Uh, when I first saw the picture of this, my uh, daughter sent me a picture. I said, well, that uh, 
that label down here is rubbed off. Then I notice uh, where there's normally a label up here on the paper tray, uh, there was no label. I thought, well, maybe they lost both decals off of that. But that seemed a little odd because uh, that's kind of unusual unless somebody took them off on purpose. When I got the machine, I was able to look at it a little bit more closely and I realized there had never been labels on it, uh, at least the best that I can tell. The other way uh, to tell, uh, and differentiate these between the quiet rider is to look at the serial number. Now the serial number, which is going to be difficult to see at this angle here, uh, is right down here. Serial numbers on typewriters are notoriously hard to find. They put them all over the place. Uh, Royal's the easiest to find, the most always beneath the uh, carriage. But here in this Remington, it's all along the side. And this begins with an A-N. Quiet Riders began with a Q-R. Uh, letter Rider was L-R. So this tells me that uh, what we have here is a, though part of that family was probably a predecessor to it, uh, and maybe a test model. I don't know that they sold for a while. Uh, or, and this is my guess at this point, uh, that it is simply a very, very basic typewriter. The, the bottom of the expense line uh, doesn't have any bells or whistles uh, to speak of. Uh, a couple of nifty things that they included to make it really uh, office worthy, uh, as if your office is in the home. Uh, but other than that, it doesn't have things. For example, you cannot tab with this thing. There's no way to set a tab. There's no tab key. It's got a margin release key. And we have a backspace key, and then the rest of it are keys used for imprinting ink on paper. And that's pretty much it. It does have a tensioner, so you can adjust how difficult it is to type with, how much resistance you're going to get. There's a one, two, and three. Uh, it does have for bichrome ribbon, so you have the blue black, uh, the stencil. And the red in this typewriter, uh, that worked perfectly. Uh, so I was able to use a bichrome ribbon with it. A reverse for the typewriter ribbon. Move this back and forth and uh, you can manually reverse which way the ribbon is spooling. So it has those kinds of things. It has basic bail. It's a nice sturdy paper bail. Very nice. Margins right up front. So you can set those very easily. These carriage releases. One on each side, work very well. Uh, of course, it has a paper guide like most typewriters do. Uh, and one of the interesting things though that's a little different than most typewriters is this little device here. And this little device here is for releasing the rollers. Uh, there are rollers underneath the primary roller. And on some of these, like the Quiet Rider, the uh, plate is larger, so it grips better. Uh, but there are rollers under here that press the paper against the uh, rubber platen. Uh, sometimes you want to release those. If your paper goes in crooked, uh, you can release it and uh, the paper will just slide on through. So if I, I put it here, I can roll it. But let's say I need to adjust it this way. You release those rollers and you can move it around or pull it out a little bit easier. So it has that and that's a very uh, useful device. It's got great lines and I, I said sometimes it doesn't uh, photograph well. Every time I've seen one of these I thought it's just not a great design. Someone called it uh, a Soviet era uh, a paper weight. Uh, I think it was probably a little tough uh, on it. They, I thought it was funny when I read it but then when I got my hands on one I began to feel that this was uh, uh, really a quality typewriter, even though it is as basic as it can get. So if you need a tab, you just have to use the space bar, and um, that's all there is to it. It does have the uh, one, two, and three line spacing. One of the things that's a little different on it, it has a hole down here. Let's see if I can get this. That shows the three through it. It's going to be a little hard to see. As a... Uh, a little hole there, and so you see the number through it, and that's how you know what you're on. Nice, easy to use, sturdy return lever, and does have a couple of devices that are really interesting. Uh, this, of course, releases it from the ratcheting, the spaced writing. You push that in, you can just roll it. 
but that isn't always ideal. It's great for filling out forms, but what if you want to just move it a little bit and then go back to the line you were on? Well, it comes with something nifty. Let me see if I can do this here. All right, so I have some paper in here now, and let's say you're having to type a, uh, a little essay for a class, and you want to type in H2O. Uh, and so that has a subscript 2, and you can do that on this typewriter by uh, using a special release to it. All right, so I put a little paper in here, and let's say you need to type something where you need to get off the basic line. That is, let's say you need subscript or you need um, superscript, something that's higher than the line or something that's lower than the line. Well, on this, they have included a nifty little thing, this little button here, that does the same thing as this button, except it will return you back to your original line. So let me see if I can do this here. I'm going to type H2O, so capital H, but now I need to do the 2, and the 2 is subscript. So I reach back here, and see the little lever here, put a little more light on it, push that down, rotate it up just a little, type the 2, push the lever back up, and type the O. And it's going to be a little difficult to see. Let me get this closer to the camera. And there you see the H2O, the two subscript. And the O is right back where it's supposed to be. Great little device for doing that. That's why uh, you can release uh, the spacing on these two different ways. One, if you don't care if you get back to your original line setting, you just push the button. And this thing will just rotate and stay wherever you are when you let go of it. This one will take you back to where you were. Uh, so for subscript, are you writing a math formula, uh, 2.4 times 10 to the 20th? Well, the 20th is going to be uh, superscript to the 10, and so it has that. So I like all of those things about it. Uh, it is uh, really very nifty. Uh, just a quick look at the uh, innards of it. One of the things uh, that Remington did is they don't use spools. I said, well, wait a minute, that's a spool. Well, actually, it's not. What it is is a lid. You just take that off, and you, the ribbon stays right where it is. So they had the originals, which I'm very excited about. Uh, so I just bought new ribbon and then hand-spooled it on uh, so that I could keep these right where they are. Type basket is nice. It is segmented shift. So they move up and down there. So... A little bit easier for uh, long-term writing. You're going to be stuck to that thing. Uh, has a special design. And you see here the, the vibrator. So to make it easier to put the ribbon in, you can squeeze these together, and it opens the typewriter uh, vibrator uh, slots that you put the ribbon in. And uh, pretty nifty. You can move them back individually if you want. So very well made, very sturdy, and... Uh, a great typewriter. But I want to let you in on another little thing that I had to go through with this. And uh, I'm going to show you another little video. I'm going to insert it here because I have a tendency now, I've been doing this long enough now that I find that it's useful. If I take a short video as I get the typewriter, that it's just the way it arrived so I could go back and look at it for sources. And uh, I did that uh, for this typewriter. So I'm going to run that right now. And as you can see, I'm uh, in a different location, I'm not in my garage. Typewriter. <coughs> and it's the predecessor uh, my garage has been 110 degrees lately. Um, uh, so I do this early the in the morning. Office writer, the letter writer. I set it out there so I can get rid of some of the dirt. I use an air compressor to get rid of things, being careful not to blow springs off and stuff like that. Inside, but uh, uh, but then as I began to look at this, and you see it uh, being rotated here, treatment. you will see that I have and a bit of a problem. Pretty good. And uh, I did a little narration with it. I'll let you listen to that. And then there's this. Okay, so you can see the problem that I had. What are you doing, Herb? And it, it was what on this side. Me? So marking things, but boy, you only want to use it on things that you want to keep marked forever and ever and ever. So I thought, well, how am I going to get rid of that? Well, as you can see here, I did. Let me tell you what I did. But I'm going to be breaking a rule here. 
and I'll, I'll tell you why in just a second. I tried several different ways to get the, the ink off. It wasn't coming off. So I had to do what you're not supposed to do, uh, and that is use alcohol on it, uh, the kind of alcohol that you use for cleaning. The reason is on some of these typewriters, the alcohol will remove the paint, and you have to be very careful, especially if you have uh, a typewriter that has two tones on it, that is, it has a, a base coat, you know, I've got a, a royal that's blue, and then it's got black accents in it. And if I take alcohol to that, it's going to wipe off all the black accents and r ruin a, a lovely uh, typewriter. But my back was against the wall on this. Uh, I, I finally figured that it's not going to look worse than having the name there. So what I did is I turned the typewriter up on its back and I did some testing. I used the alcohol down here on the edge just to see what it would do to the paint. And it didn't take all the paint off. So I thought, well, all right, I'm going to go ahead and risk it. And I used uh, a swab and the alcohol, held my breath, and um, started going at it. And it worked great. The only uh, side effect to doing that is the typewriter, which you're not going to be able to see here, uh, but the typewriter has a light, very light texture to it. it makes it uh, uh, kind of a pleasure to, uh, to touch. What it is, it's just got uh, uh, tiny little bumps on it. Uh, and it, of course, the way it reflects light and stuff uh, is affected by that. And it's, it's just really very nice. So if you look along here, you can kind of see a little bit the way that it reflects light. Down here, you may notice it's a tad smoother. Now, no one's going to see that. In fact, by the only way I can really tell is to rub my hands on it. Rub my left hand over here on this side, which I did not have to do that with. It was fine. And it's just slightly darker and it's more textured. On this side, I still have some texture, but I'm missing a little bit, especially where the name was. Just a little bit. But the only way I can really tell that is to rub my hands across it. Then I can realize that, yeah, I did take a little texture off. Uh, but it had a few other things I needed to, to remove, so I went ahead and did a little touch up that way. So I tell you all that to tell you how I solved that problem, but I'm also going to tell you don't use alcohol on the body of your typewriter uh, without first doing some testing on it. Uh, usually just uh, a little cleaner. Some people even use scrubbing bubbles. Um, some just use a little bit of dish soap, just a touch of dish soap and some water. There's really a number of products you can use that will clean most of the stuff up, but that um, wasn't going to come off without a fight, and uh, I determined to go ahead and um, to fight with it. Uh, no way to hold the paper upright. Again, very, very basic machine. This is like entry level. This is, I want a typewriter, but I don't want to pay the highest dollar price in the family of typewriters that they have. That being said, don't think of it as a cheap typewriter. It is uh, very solid, very usable. Granted, I, you know, we don't have the one, but that's not unusual in older typewriters. Um, and it doesn't have tab. But the truth is most of us don't need tabs unless we're doing forms, filling out spreadsheets, uh, doing some uh, tricky things. So you don't always need tabs. So I love this typewriter. Uh, and I think they did us a service by producing one that is so basic. Uh, in a sense, I guess it is the Volkswagen Beetle, uh, the old version Volkswagen Beetle, uh, you know, to a, a higher end uh, sports car kind of thing. No bells and whistles on the Volkswagen Beetle, but boy, it'll get you where you're going and probably save you money doing it. Well, that's the same thing with this. So here it is, the Remington, 1953, no tab, and in a sense, no name. Most likely what it is, though, it is the predecessor to the letter writer, which looks just like this, and the letter writer does not have the lever that is over here that allows you to set and uh, clear tabs. So if you find photos and stuff of a letter writer, you'll see that uh, that's missing over here, too. In fact, it looks almost identical to this, uh, except it has letter writer, R-I-T-E-R, letter writer on the... Uh, uh, front of the typewriter and also on the paper. Well, this has uh, been uh, Typewriter Tuesday. I'm so glad you joined me and I hope you enjoyed the look at the Remington 1953 No Name Typewriter. Thanks once again. We'll see you in the next episode.
This is Alton Gansy, altongansy.com. Say bye for now.